still got a thousand dollars from my friend mm -hmm. and he was able to stock the he went over to Fourth Avenue to the book stall community and bought the books he needed. He still didn't have anything to fill the shelves with because he only very rare books were his interest. He didn't want to put in any garbage pulp. So in the window of the San, of the uh, 18 Cornelia Street, there were just four or five books. <laughs> it was very sad. And uh, the customers, of course, just took advantage of the place rather than the uh, fact that they were bu could buy wonderful material there. If you're going to be a writer, you have to read that quality uh, for people to be uh, recognized you, not garbage. So anyway, what happened was it failed because winter came on and although we were filled with young guys from NYU coming to sit around the pot-bellied stove, I think it was a Franklin type stove, mm -hmm, yeah. uh, and we were able to talk literature into the wee hours in the back room of the bookstore and form a coterie of people like Dick Gilman and um, Gaddis and that we hung out at the bookstore until it was useless to try to continue, no customers. However, I was about to go to, sh to sea and ship out, as they say, and Anatole said to me, well, we have this money left over, here's half, keep your half, and I, because I got the money from, Janet, from her to give to him. What was her name? What was her name? Should I? I'll just tell you her first name. Okay. Janet. Okay. Uh huh. So here's what happened. Um, Janet was developing into a hopeless, serious case, and she moved into a sanitarium on Central Park West. And I used to visit her there. And one day, she, she was only there about a week and a half. She said, Will you bring me? some uh, cigarettes, they don't allow me to smoke here. And I said, sure, I'll get you. And as I was le going out the door, she said, well, by the way, also, I'm having trouble sleeping. I was working for a pharmaceutical company on Hudson Street at that time, and I had access to all sorts of drugs as part of my uh, training, and I wanted to help her out, so I brought her some sleeping pills Secondol, Nembutol, and uh, maybe some codeine or maybe Demerol. And I gave it to her, helping to her to sleep, not knowing that combined with alcohol, it's fatal. So when I went back the next day, after having given her this stuff, hoping it would help her, they said she's checked out. That can be taken two ways. So I said, oh my God. Well, she knew that was gonna happen. I didn't know it. I was just a young guy and I didn't know that alcohol and drugs, nobody knew it, even in the village. Second oil and Demeter, all this stuff became popular after that and people were dying of a dosing. Finally, now listen, um, the last thing she did when she closed the door she took off her wedding ring and handed it to me mm -hmm. and said, and I said, what am I going to do with this? It was a diamond wedding ring. And I, she said, take it. So I took it and guess what? I used it when I married my ex-wife, oh. who was also an alcoholic. Uh. But the, de the, 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 the story is the life and death of a bookstore is that bookstore died right away. It, it didn't catch on because of the other influences like Kerouac coming along and, and um, people who were not interested in high literature but interested in drugs. Anatole said books were our drugs. Mm -hmm. Tired. Oh, please. Sure. Boy, it's getting hot. After that story, I get exhausted. Yeah. You mean like emotionally? Well, it's a personal thing and it's not to be spread here